Stampers, Diane Dimmitch here with ddstamps.com and I want to welcome you all tonight for coming and joining me on this online workshop. I have some fun techniques that I want to share with you tonight. I'm hoping that you like them as much as I do. I wanted to let you know that if you are on my website, um, you may need to, well, you're probably not going to hear this, but you need to click the button, the play button, and hopefully um, it will start playing. And you can comment on my website and I will get emails when you do so that I'll know and then I can um, answer that, those questions. Wanted to let you know that if you're asking me a question in any of the comment boxes and I miss it for some reason, please just put it back into the comment section and hopefully I will be able to see it. Um, I am hoping that I'm live. I haven't, um, I forgot to check. But if somebody could let me know if you can hear me, that'd be great. I know Margie's over on YouTube and she is watching. And again, if you're on YouTube, you can certainly comment in the comments section and I will be able to see you as long as you're logged in. If you want to join us on Facebook, there is a link down in the description on YouTube that you can click on and it'll take you to the, to the page on YouTube or on Facebook that I'm on. Um, same thing with, no, if you're on my website, you gotta stay there. <laughs> I don't think I put it up. Maybe I did. Yeah, I think I did. Down below the screen, there would be a link. Um, oh, good. Margie can hear me. Can anybody on Facebook hear and see me or on my website? I would love to hear a comment and whether you can. That would be great. I am checking comments on my website on my phone. Oh, good. People are here. Yay. Teresa's here. Faye's here. Norma's here. Colette. Lindsay. Julie. Holy mackerel. A whole bunch of people. Linda. Teresa. Wow, great. That means that things are going well. So let me check and see if anybody responded on my website. Somebody did. And Ruth Ann sees me in Maryland. So we are across the country, probably around the world. I don't know. Usually I have people from the UK, um, Australia, New Zealand, depending on the time zone um, and and what, what they've got going on. So uh, let's see. Hmm. I haven't seen any questions that I need to answer. I just know that there's a, oh, Canada. Yep, Pam's here from Canada. I just know that there's a lot of people able to see and hear us, and so that's fabulous. I am excited. I will tell you I got a late, <laughs> this kind of crept up on me. I forgot to get the word out, but you're here, so I must have got enough word out for enough people. Um, again, remember that you can um, Comment in any of any of the places that you're at, and I should be able to see it and hear it eventually. If you are on Facebook, I'm going to share up a screen here right now. Just a couple of little reminders if you're out on Facebook. Um, you see that that little arrow down at the bottom here of this screen where it says it's checked and it says auto refresh comments. That's just automatically going to refresh your comments every 90 minutes. If you don't want that to happen. Say, for instance, you're in the middle of typing some long question or comment to me. If the 90 seconds gets up before you're done typing, and the 90 seconds starts whenever YouTube or Facebook decides it started, it's not when you start typing, um, you will lose your comment, and it will be very frustrating. So I would recommend that you could always un, you know, uncheck this, and then the, it won't auto-refresh, and then if you want to refresh comments and see what happens, sorry, here we go. You can always click on the Refresh Now button. Does that make sense to people? And for those of you, everybody that's out there, if you are interested in seeing, perhaps seeing this in high def, I don't know if you have that capability. I don't think it's going out on my end on high def, but if you click on this little gear, you can choose what speed you want the download or upload to happen at. And um, the higher the gear, the, the clearer the picture. And if you're having issues with streaming, sometimes if it's lagging behind or if it's choppy or jumpy, you can turn down that gear. Just you got to click on it, and then it, it gives you different speeds that are available. And you can turn that down, and so you'll get less choppiness. But the higher the number on the gears, the better the quality of the video. And it really it depends on what's going out at my house and what's coming into your house. So hopefully that helps people. If you have questions, like I said, do not hesitate to ask me. I, that's what I'm here for. That's one of the reasons I absolutely love these is that I can take comments and questions from people live, and that's great. Okay. 
What is my favorite item in the new catalogs? Uh, Julie asked what my... It's not working on my website? Hmm. I'm going to sleep slip over there while I'm showing a video to check on my website, see what's going on. You have to hit the arrow sometimes uh, um, to make it work. My favorite item out of the out of the new catalogs as of this moment in time on this day is oh they're not getting me on my website all of a sudden shoot am I still on Facebook oh looks like we have an issue so let me get on Hmm. This is not what I wanted to hear tonight. This is not what I wanted to hear tonight. Well, everybody refresh your screens because I'm getting it. It's coming up for me. Oh, you can. Oh, you can't see me because there's a screen on. Okay. So anyway, um, I am going to uh, change my screen here to these are the catalogs that we were talking about. Julie asked me what was my favorite item. It is the Wink Estella at this moment in time. Um, it, it can change at any moment, and uh, hopefully. You guys over on YouTube, can you still see me? Okay, we're just gonna get keep plugging away and I will ch keep checking. So first questions, I had people actually just email me some questions that they wanted to answer tonight. One of them was who designs the Stampin' Up stamps? The designers of the stamps are hired by Stampin' Up. They, um, not necessarily do they live in um, Utah, but they may be ar around the country. And it's a process that you have to go to. I actually had a niece of a gal here in Red Lodge that was going through the process with Stampin' Up um, to become one of their designers. So that was kind of exciting. I have not seen um, her since, well, it's she started the process before Christmas and I haven't seen her since, so I don't know what the outcome was for her granddaughter, but I think that's kind of cool if there's another connection from Red Lodge to Stampin' Up. So that's exciting to me. Uh, next question that somebody asked me was, not that. Oh, they asked me, can you show the perfectly artistic designer series paper? Somebody contacted me today and they wanted to see this perfectly artistic designer series paper. It is paper that is um, available through Celebration. It's one of the limited edition items, so it's only available till February 15th. It's so much different than I thought it was going to be, but I figured this was the easiest way to show you was to do it up on the screen. But you can see all the different colors that you get. Everything goes with white. It's just really cool. I mean, you could do a lot of fun things with this because you've got skies and gray. Oh, you just it's so much fun. And I honestly wasn't sure that I needed it, um, but I do like the look of it, and it's been a lot of fun just to play with. So I hope that helps. Hope that makes sense. Uh, anybody else have any other questions? Please feel free to let me know. I am looking. I have, let's see. I'm wondering if people aren't having problems with their own computers. Okay, so people can't see and hear me. Um, I know there are a lot of many fun looking items and I'm looking forward to trying that pen. There's so much stuff in there, but if you had to pick one thing, that's what I'd pick. Okay, so let's get started because this is one of my favorites, um, is the Bloom and Love Bundle. And I did show some Bloom and Love Bundle last week and actually my tutorial or my newsletter went out yesterday and it had a couple ideas. I love this idea. I just think that this is a cool technique. It could be done with any colors, any any colors you have, anything. Oh, good gosh. I'm having some issues tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, 
Stampers, Diane Damage here with DeeDeeStamps.com and today I'm here to show you how to do how I did this card. One of the things I love about this card is the monochromatic look. Monochromatic only just means um, one color. Um, and you'll see that I use the same color in the ribbon and the ink and the embellishments for this card. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, for this particular card, I used the Bloom and Love stamp set and the Bloom and Heart Thinlets. And these actually come as a bundle where you'll save 15% if you choose to, to purchase those together. And card wise, card stock wise, I am using a base of our um, Whisper White thick card stock. I like it. It's, it's really a, it's a firm base. And this is actually eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. So that's my card base. I'm using a piece of tip top taupe. And this is cut four by five and a quarter. And then I've got another piece here of just a regular Whisper White cardstock. And that is just cut a little bit shorter than the tip top taupe. And I will tell you what the measurement is. It's a three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. And I will actually post all these measurements and supplies up on my website and there'll be a link to click there. And then this is just another piece of cardstock. It's actually an eighth of a piece of cardstock that I'm gonna to use to stamp on. So to begin with, but what I did with this base right here is I actually ran it through my Big Shot with the heart embossing folder. And I just ran it through so I have a nice textured background for that. And then I'm gonna take my piece of tip top taupe I'm going to move this stuff out of my way. And I'm going to come in with that heart framelit. And I'm just going to show you quickly. I am using our precision plate. And so with the precision plate, I'm going to lay down the cardstock. And then I'm going to take my thinlet and I'm actually going to lay it on here. Now what I did with my card is I laid this on here so that I have a little bit of space on the sides here and this is actually the piece that I use to layer on my card. So this little edge around my card actually underneath has the framelit cut out from it. So just there's just a little tip. Save you a little bit on cardstock. And then you're going to go ahead and put a plate on top and you're going to run that through your Big Shot. And with these framelits, what I found is that I'm gonna run it through once, I'm gonna go back over again. And I just think that it cuts better, it, the, and you don't have to go fast. So each time you go through, it's just gonna cut through that, that intricate design a little bit more. We'll do three times back and forth. That's most probably than I've ever done, but. And then we'll move this out of the way. Come back with my piece that I've cut here. And then I am going to use my dye brush, which is a new little tool from, that Stampin' Up! is carrying. And then in here is the foam pad that comes with it. And I actually just put this into one of our wood cases to try to keep everything kind of contained. And you just rub this over the top of that, and that is going to, as you can tell, it's going to loosen up that framelit, and it's gonna poke out, hopefully poke out, all of those little bits of paper. And when you pull this up, whoo, pull it out of here. You can see all those little pieces of paper are just flying all over. That is, the, the brush has helped, um, get them out of there and then there are a few that I might have to go around or just kind of but they'll all come out and um, you will have a great little fancy embellishment for your card okay so there's that piece and then I'm going to go ahead and take my ink which is tip top taupe and on this one, I went ahead and I can, I hope you can see this, but I've mounted these flowers and I actually mounted them both onto my piece of cardstock. And you can see where they have arrows on here. That's because that coordinates with the framelits that go with them. And you'll see the framelit has a little notch. So once I stamp these on this cardstock, like this, then I will be able to easily come in here because I knew that that little arrow pointed up and line these up and cut them out with my Big Shot. 
and they'll have cute little flowers. So I will go cut those out. Oh, one more thing. I wanted to do a banner. And I'm going to stamp this banner onto this piece of cardstock also. And I'm going to stamp the words. And the nice thing about the photopolymer is that because I can see right through there, I can line up exactly where I want those words to be. And then I just wanted to point out, now you can just cut out that banner. But also on our number framelits, that banner matches, coordinates with that. And so that's one of the things I love about Stampin' Up! is all the coordination. But that's great. So if you don't want to cut out the banner, get the number set. You'll love it. So I will be right back as soon as I get these cut out. Okay, I got those pieces cut. I've got my heart embellishment. I have got my cardstock. Here's my base, <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and put this card together. So to begin with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my um, embossed base, and I'm just going to add some snail right around the edges of this. I'll scoot that out of the way for a minute and show you how I cover up that, where I cut that heart out. And lay that on there. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with our tip top ribbon. I love this dotted lace trim ribbon. It's just, it's so delicate. It's beautiful. And I'm going to measure out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie a knot on this card. And so one of the ways that I measure my ribbon is if you take three lengths of the ribbon, so one, two, three, and trim that off, I will have enough to do a knot. If I wanted to do a bow, I would just do four lengths of my card, and then I will have plenty to do a bow and cut off what I don't need. So there's just a little tip on how to cut your ribbon. And now I'm going to tie this in a bow. There we go. Or a knot, excuse me. And then once I get that tied, I do have a little bit I can trim up here and just kind of clean up my edge a little bit. Call it good. If I don't want the ribbon there, I can move it. I can just pull it on this card and move it around to wherever I want to have it. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to start putting these on. And I'm going to use um, dimensionals to put these on with. And I'm looking for them, but I will find them. Okay, there. Um, so I'm going to take a couple of dimensionals. And I'm actually going to place them on the back of where these flowers are on this delicate die cut. And pull off the backs of those. And add that to my card. And then I'm going to take doily or doilies. I'm going to take um, dimensionals and I'm going to add them onto my flowers. I'm just going to put a couple flowers on there, and they do coordinate. They match up perfectly. But if you don't get them perfectly matched up, it's okay. It'll look great, um, even if it's just a little bit crooked. It kind of just gives a dimensional look to your flower. So there's those. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my banner on. You can see how quickly this card comes together. Put my banner on. And then I can go ahead and just add some adhesive to this. And add this to the base of my card. Make sure it gets on there straight. And then I'm going to take one of the stamps in that set and I want to just jazz up the inside of my card a little bit. And that's one of the things I love about these photopolymer stamps is that it's so easy to line them up. And I can just take that right down the side of the card. And probably what I will do with this one is I'll do an envelope too. And I'll have that going down the envelope so it coordinates together. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you tonight was the um, Wink Costella. This is actually one of my favorite new products from Stampin' Up! that we carry. And it is just like a glitter paintbrush. So when you get your Wink Costella, it's actually got a little ring in here, black ring. you got to unscrew this, take the ring out, screw that back on. And then you want to gently squeeze. On where it's, it says push, you want to gently push or squeeze on there. 
and the ink will start to, the glitter will start to come down through this tube and then come down to the brush. And once you've done that, then you can just paint on. And I don't know if you can see this. I'll put the camera up to it. But it just puts a fine, fine little wink of glitter. It's just, it's just, it's just makes it, it pops, it's beautiful. And then I'm going to come in and I'll add a couple of pearls, which will really jazz up this card. And there you have it. Just a super quick, um, could be Valentine's, could be wedding, could be anniversary. And you could do this in any color. Any of our colors would look fabulous with this. So I hope that you have signed up for my um, newsletter. You can do that by... Okay, so that is my first card. Um, it is one of my favorites. I do love it. I think it'd be gorgeous in any color. I'm back. Lots of questions while you guys while you guys were watching videos. I've, I I don't know if you could probably hear me back here, but I'm kind of running around my stamp room gathering up stuff so that I can answer those questions. So to begin with, um, Jamie asked me, "How do you line up the balloons?" with the punch, and I don't have a video on that one yet. I do have it on another punch that you line up, but I quick went and got the stuff so I can hopefully kind of demonstrate it online and it will make sense to people. But we are talking about the balloon celebration and the punch that coordinates with it. There's actually another balloon, the balloon animals set coordinates with the punch too, but a way that you can punch your balloons and stamp them at the same time. Let me show you what I do, Jamie. So I took a piece of cardstock and I punched it out, just a punch on just, this was just a scrap I grabbed. And then I wrote front on it because I want to remember that this is the front of my cardstock. And then I'm going to take my balloons and I have them here. This is not going to be easy because I don't have a table I'm working on. So I'm going to do the front and you're going to lay your balloons into those, into the um, holes with the flat side of the photopolymer facing up like this, and you're just gonna actually just put them in there, laying on the table, and then you're going to take a clear block, and you're going to lay it right on top of those balloons, and press down, and then the balloons get onto your block in the same space as the punches, so it lines up perfectly. Okay, and so then we'll pretend like I inked up those balloons, got them all inked up in this beautiful orange color, and I have this piece of cardstock, and I'm stamping those balloons down on that cardstock. I'll do it so it lines up so you can see, like that. And you pull it off, and you've got two beautiful balloons. And then when you take your punch, and I use my punch as upside down, you are going to slide that down inside your punch, and then line up, can't do it without looking at it, I gotta look. <laughs> line up your balloons with your punch. It's not the easiest thing to do when you're not sitting at your table under your lights. So anyway, you line up your balloons and you punch them out. And there, you have two balloons that you punched out with your punch lined up. So that's how you do it, Julie. Just make a make a scrap piece of cardstock right front on it. Store this in with your stamp sets. Then you lay this down on your on your table. You lay your stamps in there with the back side up. Pick them up with your clear block and your stamp should line up with your punch. You could do that with any of your punches that have stamps that go with it. I hope that makes sense to people. Um, thanks for the question. That was a good one. I, like I said, I do have a video out there. It was easier to go find my stuff than to go find a video. Bonnie asked, how come I use thick cardstock? You know, it's really just a personal choice. I don't use it very often. I have recently come to liking it, using it. I shouldn't say liking it because I do like it. It just gives a card a little more oomph. So this is the card that I made and it's just real sturdy. There's nothing wrong with our Whisper White cardstock, but I I do like the thick for bases. Like if I'm just going to do a base for a card, I might start just using Whisper White thick just because it's just so nice and nice and sturdy. Does that make sense? 
Um, um, Bonnie said she used, oh, she used a dryer sheet and it worked great with the heart embellishment. I'm glad to hear that. I did do some, um, sometimes people don't like dryer sheets and sometimes it curls a little bit. I didn't have some issues. I didn't have many issues this weekend when I was playing with that heart and the dryer sheets. It works out fairly well. Um, the one issue I did have is because it's so detailed, I had some that stuck to it. But anyway, thanks Bonnie for that. And Lisa Spacek asked, do you do this full time? Um, not really full time. I do, I, I spend a lot of hours on my Stampin' Up! business. Um, my husband and I have an auto parts store here in town and so I go, I'm the bookkeeper and the bank runner and do the paperwork end of it. And so several hours a day I actually go over there. So what happens is I'll come in the morning, I'll do some work, answer emails, go to work at the auto parts store and then in the afternoon I have, this is when I work on my business. But I am, um, it keeps me very busy, keeps me very busy. I love this. This is this is still a hobby to me. So this is really a lot of fun. But I am doing well. So it could be a full time business if I chose that. I hope that answers your question. Okay. So my question to you is: the first person to tell me what color I used on this card, what color was the monochromatic color I used, will get this sent to them in the mail. So I am scoping out everybody. Waiting for your answer, seeing who comes up first. Oh, Jamie, you're welcome. I'm glad that you got uh, I'm glad that you got that figured out that punch and balloon thing going on. I'm sorry that the website's not working for you, Dorothy. Okay, well, I see one winner. Oh, good. I'm glad you guys like that balloon trick. The winner was Sis Lisa. I want to say Sissy Spacek. I'm sorry. I'm sure that you probably hear that all the time. Lisa, she got the answer right. So, Lisa, if you will send me your email address, not your email address, your mailing address, either you can send me a, a message on Facebook. You could actually put it up in the YouTube comments and I will find it. Or you can send me an email at Diane at DD Stamps and I will get that card out to you. Congratulations. Glad you won. I am going to continue to be looking for um, comments and questions as I pull up the next, whatever's next. I don't really know. That's how I am. <laughs> Okay. Oh, so the this is the um, card that I made. These are the supplies that I used. And as you can see, I used Tip Top Taupe. That was my color of this card. But I'm telling you what, this card would be beautiful in any colors. So afterwards, after this whole thing is done online, I will have these slides available on Facebook, where if you just want to click through the slides and see what I used or watch another video, they'll be, lo they'll be located down below the actual video taped version of this after we are done tonight. So these are all clickable links too, so you can, so you can click them and see exactly what it is that, that you need to get. But remember, you don't need the, the colors because um, you can use any color. These are just some cards that I've recently received in a card swap that I was in. And um, it's fun for me to be able to share them with you. Lots of different ideas with this card, with this um, particular um, stamp set and framelit set. And I'll tell you, that's, I mean, I sent you some stuff this weekend or this yesterday in my newsletter of a couple of other ideas. So there's lots of things you can do with this, but this is definitely not just for Valentine's Day. This could be used year round for lots of different fun things. Um, okay, we're just going to do a little quick talk about celebration and then we get back to, I got two more, two more things to demonstrate tonight that I don't think you want to miss. So celebration is going on now between now and March 31st. I've had lots of people ask me because a lot of people thought it just went on here in January, but no, it is a three month event. There's lots of stuff that you can do and earn in celebration. Um, for every $50 in product that you purchase before shipping and tax, you get a free product out of the celebration brochure. I didn't post it all up, but if you don't have a celebration brochure or an occasions mini catalog, let me know and I will mail one out to you. 
Um, another way that is a great way to earn is to join Stampin' Up. I had a couple of people join this week. They were able to purchase $155 worth of product of their choice for $99, and that's also free shipping. Plus, you get all the business supplies that you need, so that's a fabulous deal. And the third way is to host a workshop, and I have several people that are doing that, and you can host workshops different ways. I can come into your home, you can come into my home, or I can do them online with your friends. And so if you're interested in, in earning free hostess benefits during celebration, you get $25 more at the $250 party level, and that's really a screaming deal. A couple of other things about celebration. There are some items in there that are limited time. So for instance, this Sky's the Limit has been a really popular stamp set this, this January. It's only available until February 15th and then it's gone. So if this is something that you're interested in, make sure that, that you get that order placed before February 15th. And then here's just a few more samples of some cards that I received in a swap this week. I just think they're fabulous and it's just a really fun set and we are always searching for masculine cards and man, does this fit the bill. So, and then a couple of other things, the, um, the Hello stamp set is a limited time, and also that paper, that Perfectly Artistic Designer Series paper. It's only available until the 15th. Um, but you can kind of see from the pictures that I showed what it really looks like. But it's just a fun, kind of a fun background paper. Okay, card number two. I love this card. This is one of my favorites. Um, I hope that you love it as much as I do. I'm going to... Uh, Keep looking. Yeah, somebody else said something about the number of dies being kind of cool looking. They are, and I feel bad because I haven't had time to play with them. Um, Dorothy said, is that the paper? Is it on both sides of paper? Hmm. Dorothy, you're going to have to refresh my memory about what you're talking about because I don't know what that means. And I'm sorry that the website didn't work. I don't know what's going on there. Anybody else over there at my website? Oh, I'm getting all kinds of all kinds of comments over there okay well it's working for other people okay so hey Ruth I just wanted to say hello Ruth Harris is a friend of mine um I got your comment I'm glad you made it okay so I think we're good I think we got everything covered. I think I've checked around and, and made sure I'm catching everybody's comments. So, okay, next card. Like I said, this is kind of one of my favorites because it's so easy to do. Hey, Stampers, Diane Divich here with ddstamps.com, and today I'm here to show you how I did this card using this great. Um, resist embossing watercolor technique and it's super easy I don't think it's hard um, but it just really is makes every card look great so to begin with I'm using the bloom and love stamp set from Stampin Up and I'm using this stamp to do the embossing and I believe I use this one and this one this for the background and this for the little sentiment but there's lots of little things you could do with this card um, just to change it up a little bit I am using pool party Island Indigo and Bermuda Bay cardstock, or excuse me, ink, and the cardstock that I'm using, this is a piece of, was eight and a half by 11 cardstock cut in half, so that's four and a quarter, and then scored at five and a half, and that gives me my card base, and it's just a different way to fold your card. The reason that I do that is because I want to put this ribbon on here, and it's easier to tie it around that way on the card. So, there's my card base. And then I used two other pieces of cardstock. This is Island Indigo, and this is the shimmer, shimmery white cardstock from Stampin' Up. I do like to use this for watercoloring because it has kind of a coating on it, and it holds up pretty fairly well to the aqua painter. So this is cut three by three. This is cut three and an eighth by three and an eighth, and I will post those up on my website. Um, there'll be a link that you can click into the video. So to start with, I'm going to go ahead and do the background on my stamp, and I just used this little bunch of flowers and the pool party. So I'm just using the same ink. Um, same color as the cardstock. And one of the things that I do when I do a background is you'll see that I'm kind of moving my stamp around and I like to do them in groups of threes. It just gives to, for me, and also to go off my cardstock. The reason I do that is because then I don't get too many placed in the same area. 
Um, that's just what I've done for years. So, but like I said, make sure that you're stamping some of them off the edge of this paper because you can. It actually looks a little bit better if you take some off the edges. So there's my background just really quick. You can see I just used the pool party. You could also use the Versamark. Um, you get the same look. Versamark just makes the cardstock just a, or the inking of a, of a piece of cardstock just a little bit darker so that you can see it. So then I'm going to set that aside and then I'm going to bring in my shimmer white and I like to use my embossing buddy when I'm um, embossing and this is just it's like a so there's a little powder in there and it takes the static away from the cardstock so that you are not um, it, all the embossing powder doesn't stick all over but honestly with this technique you can get away with that because you're going to watercolor over the top top of it and those little splotches of of embossing powder that are all over your card it's not going to make it look bad so i just went ahead and stamped this flower right down into the middle of that piece of shimmer white cardstock and you can't see that because it's versamark it's a little light and then i'm going to sprinkle embossing powder over the top of that flower Shake some off, and then I'm going to go heat set it. I will be right back. There you have it, it's heat set. You can see that the embossed image is kind of shiny and you do want to check when you emboss, just, oh, and I see a spot where I missed. If you have a spot that's a little dull, it's just that you haven't heat set that, that powder. There we go. So you want to make sure that you check into like a light or sunlight, just to make sure that every area is um, melted. And then I'm going to take this piece of, paper and I just laid this paper down so I can kind of use it as a funnel to funnel that embossing powder right back into the container that it came out of. Okay so then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with Island Indigo and actually I'm going to squeeze down on my ink pad and make myself a little bit squeeze a little harder than that. I'm going to make myself a little palette um, to watercolor with. Ooh, I got a lot up there. And I'm going to come in with a, oh, not that. I need an aqua painter. Come in with an aqua painter. An aqua painter, these come in, in sets of two. This is the larger of the two brushes. There's a, there's a large tip and a smaller tip. What you can do is you fill these with water to watercolor with, and then um, you get a continuous flow of ink. I love them because they're easy to use and they're not too messy. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to pick up some ink. I'll start with the Bermuda Bay, pick up some of that color and then just go right over my project. I only want to go over half of it because then I want to scoot, scoot into my Island Indigo and come up on this side and just add some Island Indigo. And you can actually add in there if you don't like the color or it didn't get dark enough, you can add, but what you want to make sure is is that you wash this off before I start going back into the Bermuda. I can go from light to dark, but it's harder to go from dark to light. And I'm just going to use a piece of paper to rinse that off with and actually I want to come in a little bit more here so you can just kind of touch it up where you want to add a little bit more ink not so much that's it that's how easy that technique is super easy and looks great looks great with any of our bold solid stamps now the next process is to wait for this to dry and you can see I'm sure you can see on here where I've got some watercolor on that embossing well it kind of puddles up so the best thing to do is to just take a piece of paper towel and just blot that up. And that will clear up that white image and then you've got um, a nice clear image and your watercolor. I just love this. I just, and I love how easy it is. Once that's done, you're just going to go ahead and attach some snails, get some adhesive on the back of it, attach it to a piece, that piece of Island Indigo. So that's just a little bit bigger than the square of Shimmer White. And then I'm gonna come back in with my card base and attach it all together. So I'm gonna use dimensionals on this little square. I just like the lift that dimensionals give um, to my cards. 
and pull off the backs of those. <laughs> there we go. And then I'm going to attach that on there. And I'm actually, what I'm looking for here is I just wanted it to be kind of the same measurement all the way on those three sides. And then I'm going to come in with some of this glimmer, glitter ribbon that we've got. Oh my gosh. This is glitter ribbon and pool party. And this video won't do it justice, but it is sparkly and beautiful and actually fairly soft. And of course, I'm going to do a bow this time. And so to do, to do my measurement, I start at my end here and do one, two, three, four lengths of ribbon. And that will give me enough for a bow. If I were just going to do a knot, of course, I would do three lengths. And then I'm going to tie this around here. And when I tie my bows, I go end over and then kind of make it into a plus sign. And then make this one into a loop and bring this one around the back. And then you have the perfect bow. Oh, it worked. And, you're, and then you're really happy when it works. <laughs> and then I'm going to actually, again, I can scoot the ribbon here where I need it to be. I think I want it here. That's what I like about this technique with the bows is because you can kind of scoot them around exactly where you want them. Now, if I wanted this to, to lay perfectly flat, I would just stick a little glue dot on the back of that and then push it down. And that will make assure me that it stays flat. And then what I'm going to do with the friend is I'm going to go ahead and ink that up in, in the island indigo. I went with a darker color and I'm just going to stamp that. The joy of having photopolymer is that you can see exactly where it stamps. And there you have the card, but I couldn't resist adding just a little bit more to this card. So I came in with my Wink Estella and I'm not sure this is going to show up on the video, but I'm telling you, this has become my favorite new product from Stampin' Up. And all I'm going to do is, it's just a, it's a glitter paint. And I'm just going to go right over the top of my project here. And get some glitter all over that. Now, this does get a little bit of the blue ink on there. So I am going to take a piece of a paper towel or a paper and just wipe that off. So that my Wink Estella isn't tinted blue. Not that that's a bad thing. Anyway, once you've done that, you can see it also resists the, the embossing. And so you can also come in and just clean off that embossing. But now I've really made that shimmer, that area that's watercolored. Super easy and it looks good. And then of course, we have to add some pearls. Because it just really adds some elegance to this card. Stuck to my finger. There we have it. Card is complete. Um, I just love I love this watercolor technique, and I hope you do too. And I just want to let you know, if you haven't already done so, you may want to visit my website where you can see. Okay, so there's my second card tonight. I do love this one. I love the colors. I love I personally love to watercolor, so I do it a lot. Um, I think I like to watercolor because it's fast and it's easy. Honestly, that's, that's why. But I wanted to see. I don't know if this is going to show... I was kind of hoping you'd pick up that, see, it's, it's not going to be very clear, but you could pick up that Wink Estella, a little bit there, Wink Estella in there. It's just, it's beautiful. It's a great card. And um, somebody commented, sorry, I didn't write your name down. I feel bad. I didn't check the name, but somebody commented about the non-traditional colors. And I really did go non-traditional tonight. But every card that I did, you could do this in any color, just like the other card. You could do it in any color. This is really considered monochromatic too, because it's all shades of one color. Um, and I love the aqua painter watercolor using your ink pads because it's always good to have, um, more techniques that you can do with what, the products that you own. Okay. So Faye asked about clear stamps. She's having trouble with her clear stamps sticking to her blocks. And I will tell you, I'll give you a couple of tips, Faye. Number one, I pulled out this stamp set that I have here is, is, um, a, a, it's a clear mount is what she's talking about. Now, I just wanted to point out another little thing that I do, but this is a clear mount stamp set. This one I actually use. I just didn't put the stickers on the back of them, and they cling fine. That's one way. Now, when I do my cling mounts, I always keep the, the outside piece of rubber, and I actually usually attach it to the case, and then these just pull up. 
But then I know, number one, that all the stamps are in the case because all the holes are full, and they also don't rattle around in the container. So there's one little tip. That's one way to do it. Don't use the stickers. The second way to do it on this one, too, this will give you an idea. This is how I do my, my um, clear mounts with this is actually, see, so you pull off that sticker, then this is a cling mount on, oh, sorry, cling mount on the back, and that stays down. So you're going to pull out a stamp, and I'm using this old world stamp um, of the globe from the open sea. I don't know if you can see it on there, but can you see that? Okay, so what I did on that was I took either one of these. It could have been the two-way glue pen or it could have been the multi-purpose use. I think it was a two-way glue pen because it just looks that way. So you take your two-way glue pen, and the reason it's called two-way glue is because it, it, it glues things two different ways. One, if you just take it and wipe it over the top of that and then let it set to dry, it's like a post-it note. It'll do the same thing with paper. If you put this on a piece of paper and then you don't attach it to anything and you let it dry, it's like a post-it note. You can pull it off and on and off and on and off and on. This is a perfect use for it if you're doing any masking techniques, but it also works with this. I will tell you that I did this one. I'm looking for the clear block that I had here. No, I left it over here. I did this one um, probably several years ago. Once you do that, once you leave it on there to dry, your stamp stick. And it, it takes a little doing to get off. But your stamps will stick and you won't have that issue. The other thing you need to do is you need to make sure that your blocks are clean and that the top of this is clean. Now, with the glue on there, I can still clean that glue off if I choose to at some point. But once you do it, it's good to go. And then it'll stick. But the biggest thing that gets to the clear stamps is the oil on your hands. If you're a hand lotion person, you're getting oils on your blocks, you're getting oils on your stamps, and then they don't stick very well. But those two glue little techniques, they, they work fabulous for that. Or not putting the stickers on at all helps a lot too. So Faye, I hope that answers your question. And Debbie asked about if I had used white embossing powder or clear embossing powder on that card. And I believe, I'm hoping I get it right, but I believe that I used white. But it could have been clear. Either one would work fine. Either one works just fine on, with that technique. You're, you're not going to go wrong. Yeah, I'm really sorry, Luce, that you can't see the the glitter from the Wink Estella, but it really adds a lot. Linda says sometimes I freeze and sometimes I don't on my computer. Yeah, it's it's doing the same for everybody. And it it's because I'm dealing with website, YouTube, Facebook, you know, where it's happened. But I this will be taped so you can watch it all the way through at any other time. Ah, Ruth Ann's been using Wink Estella for quite a while. That's awesome. Good for you. Okay, well, I don't see any more questions. I haven't checked my website. I do have a couple of things here. Let me pull up the, the screen. Where was I? Here we go. And move to the next slide. So again, here's the list of supplies that I used with Blooming Love. This will tell you what I used. I used the, the white embossing powder is what I used. Um, but like I said, you can use white or you can use clear. Either one works. Here's another card that I did with that technique. And on this one, you can see, um, as everybody knows, I used Melon Mambo and Daffodil Delight on this card and just watercolored over the embossed image. This is one of the celebration items. And I didn't get to, I didn't wipe off the, uh, the watercolor or the ink colors quick enough and I ended up with that all over my card but I love it I love this card um, and it actually was fairly quick and it was fairly easy um, the other thing is is that on this piece of designer series paper down here it's actually was white stars I think it's from the birthday the new birthday paper and I just sponged daffodil the light color because it was too too stark there was too many differences um and so i just sponged the yellow on there and kind of toned it down a little bit but and then the, actually that says because you're awesome i actually emboss that i've gotten into embossing a lot lately um and sometimes i go in spurts okay so julie asked diane do you know what the measurements were for the magnetic vent cover sheets that you cut for your framelits i bought some but haven't cut it yet because i don't want to ruin it thanks 
What I did, Julie, is I just measured the piece of cardboard or the chipboard that comes in with my framelits and thinlets. Whatever size that was, that's what I cut my vent covers to. I hope that helps. Oh, I'm sorry, Debbie had to leave. That's she just can't she can't take the in and outs. Mary, I'm glad it's good on your end. Great. So far, so good. Okay, so let me uh, make sure everything's okay over on YouTube. So it looks good there. Checking my website. We still have one more fun card to do that I, 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 I don't want to lose people and have you be bored stiff. Okay, so the next card is this one here. Super easy to do. This one I actually wasn't going to show tonight, but I, but I love it so much I had to. And then I, so I quick did a video and about, oh, maybe 20 minutes before we were supposed to start, it was ready on YouTube for you to watch. So if there's any mistakes in here, it's just the way I am. Here we go. Hey Stampers, Diane Dimitri here with DDStamps.com and today I'm going to show you how I did this card. It's very simple. It's just some little paper piecing um, using a framelit and then I've also used a stamp set. So I'll show you. First let's start with what I used. I am using the Rose Wonder stamp set and the Rose Garden Thinlets and these actually come as a bundle. You can get 15% off savings. Um, and I'll link all the products and measurements and everything into my website um, up at the top there. You can click on that to get it. Um, one of the things I wanted to show you, though, these show kind of small images, but these images are big. They're really big. Um, and I just wanted you to see the different sizes as to what's opposed on the, on the front. So um, to get started, I am using cardstock, and the measurements are, this is a piece of early espresso, 8.5 by 5.5, scored at 4 and a quarter in the middle, and that's my card base. I'm using for a frame, I'm just using a piece of wild wasabi, and this is cut five and a quarter by four and that's just going to layer right onto here and then this piece is actually <laughs> an eighth of an inch shorter than this piece so that it will just give a little tiny matte frame around it so we're talking three and seven eighths by five and an eighth I thought I would remember. Anyway, so those are those pieces. And then I've got a couple of scraps just to do the little label that I'm doing on the front. And, and then I've got other colors that I did the flower with. And the colors that I used were Hello Honey, So Saffron, and Crushed Curry. That's my flower colors. And my leaf uh -oh. colors are Garden Green and Wild Wasabi. And then I'm using early espresso for the frame on the outside. And so to do this, this is what people are talking about. What I've done is I'm going to come in with my big shot and my rose dye. We'll use the big one. I've got my magnetic platform. I've got a plastic clear um, clear plate. I've got a dryer sheet that is actually new so it still smells fresh. I'm laying down a piece of the So Saffron cardstock and I just on this one I just want to make sure that that flower piece is in there before I run it through my machine. To make sure these are straight there. I don't know what's going on there with that video. But I'm going to take us back there and I'll bump us up to where we started. And come out the other end. And what I love about this is that die will pop right off, but all those pieces will stay attached to the dryer sheet. And for doing this technique, this works really great because you're going to be pe peeling off these pieces and they're not flying all over. So, oh, sorry ladies and gentlemen. It's the hardest part about doing these. 
is fine pen. I love this little pen. It just is a really fine um, flow of ink. Not a lot, just a little bit, so that you can do all these fine areas on this framelit. And you don't have to get every single spot, but I do like to make sure like the tips of my flower, my leaves are down, my edges. Um, but you don't have to hit hit all the way around it. But you want to get enough on there. Okay, once I have that all with adhesive on it, I'm going to go ahead and take my sheet of Whisper White cardstock that I'd cut down, and I'm just going to add this frame right onto my cardstock. And you just want to go around and make sure that everything gets adhered. Might even flip it over and really, you know, push pretty fairly hard on that, trying to get all those edges adhered down. And see this leaf is coming up, so I'm just going to add a little bit of adhesive under there and then push it down again. Once I get all these pieces back in here, it is going to, um, that's going to hold it down more too. So once you've done that, then what you're going to do is you're just going to come in, and I'm using three different colors just because I like the, the shading of it all, and I'm just going to add some ink into these middle holes here. And then it's like putting a puzzle together, only luckily the pieces are all pretty easy to find. And you just go ahead and pop them right into the spaces that are open for those pieces. And they fit right in there nicely because they've all been cut with a die cut that's exactly the same. And really there's no rhyme or reason, I just kind of put pieces in there. Um, just trying to make sure that, you know, no two were exactly alike sitting, uh, sitting on top of each other. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so I got the inside of the flower done. It doesn't take very long once you start putting the pieces in there, and it doesn't really matter. You can just randomly put them in there. But one of the things I like about this is that if I cut more of these frames, I can do three flowers because I'm just going to use the opposite pieces. And so I just keep placing them all in there until I have three flowers it done. Really matter. And then... Um, we're good to go. Now I'm going to go in now and place the green in, the, into the leaves. Same concept, just going to pop them in there and I will be right back. Okay, so there's my card done with the green too. And I will tell you, I only use two different colors of green. So I have enough in my leaves cut to go ahead and do one more card like this. If I'd added a third green in there, I would have some, but you can always cut some more. Um, anyway, I love the way this looks. It gives it kind of a stained glass look. And I just glued it right onto that piece of Whisper White. And so it's a pretty sturdy piece of cardstock. Then what you're going to do is you're going to come in and I'm just going to attach it. So I'm going to attach my wild wasabi onto my card base. And then attach my Whisper White. Onto that frame. And you'll see how it just gives a bare, just a little bit of a green edge around there, just adds a little to it. Once I've done that, I'm coming in with my pieces of scrap. And what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to use early espresso. And I'm actually going to stamp the frame from that set. And then I'm going to stamp the words inside that frame. And I love it, photopolymer, because you can look and see if you're lining them up exactly how you want them. Stamp them down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this piece through to, to get um, a frame with the framelits, which is this one here. And then I'm going to cut this one out. And I'll show you why in a minute. Once I have those done, I'm going to go ahead and trim this out. And I, the reason that I stamped the frame is I actually want to cut this and just cut that frame off. And one of the things I've found when you're cutting a frame off like this is if you have a background piece of paper that's white, like this, I'll be able to see that I did cut that whole frame off. So if it's on a dark background, I can't really see if I've totally cut it off. But all I'm going to do is just trim off that frame. And then once I have the frame cut off, 
it's going to layer right onto that label perfectly. That was the reason that I used that, I stamped that frame first, because I really wanted that to lay right on there and match up perfectly. And then this is just going to get attached on to the front of my card. Really, not very hard technique, but really fun. It looks like stained glass. People will be impressed with all, all the paper piercing. And using the dryer sheets makes it super easy. Now, I do have other cards that I did with this technique that I'm going to show at the end of the video, so you might want to stick around to see some of those other samples. But I'm going to come back to the one, the original card that I made. And when I open it up, you'll see that I stamped, uh, I did um, uh, insert the same size, four and a quarter by no, four by five and a quarter. And then I just stamped it with um, one of the sentiments. And then I took that big rose stamp and added that onto one of my clear blocks and stamped that on the inside using one of the colors of yellows that I used. And that's it. It just is a really fun, pretty card. This one I added with dimensionals. This one I did not. So you can see you can kind of change it up a little bit. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you enjoyed the other samples that will come up here. Um, thanks, and if you haven't already done so, you may want to visit my website where you can sign up for my newsletter, Tips, Tricks, and Techniques, each week. Thanks, and have a great day. So there were just some more ideas of that, that technique. I've used paper. I've used um, designer series paper. I used... All kinds of paper. In fact, I think I have it. I think I have them on a on a screen, and I can kind of sh point out what I did. So there's the supplies I used. And again, like I said, this will all be up afterwards. And these links, they're all clickable, and you can look through them. Okay, so these are some of the cards that I did. This is using that designer series paper that we, sorry, that we've been talking about tonight. So you can see where that marbling comes in, and I pieced that together just for the fun of it. And then this one here is just using the One Color Blushing Bride. Oh, good gosh. I don't know why that happens. I'm really having some issues with my screen share. So that one up at the above there, the pink one, is just um, Blushing Bride. Um, the other thing I did on the, the, the yellow one at the top and, and this one down here is I used black glitter paper as the as the flower frame. It's beautiful in person. It doesn't show up so great in the pictures, but um, that's how I got that. And then the, the fourth one over there, I used the silver foil paper as the, as the outline, and then I just cut a little hole with the framelit into through the card, and when you open it up, it actually says happy birthday on the inside. So just another fun way to use that, that die and that stamp set, I looked at this. This was one of those stamp sets that I looked at and thought, oh, good gosh, you could do so many different techniques with this. Um, and and, I, and I'm sure I will be over the, over the next few months. So that's awesome. I don't see, let's see. Did I, uh, oh, somebody asked, Mary Ellie asked if you can use regular cardstock for the technique. On that watercolor technique, the, the regular cardstock, it, it kind of buckles. And the water, it doesn't. The water doesn't sit at the top. It kind of buckles and and makes it, um, it gets kind of waterlogged, I guess, is what you could say. So I don't know if, if regular cardstock would work, but give it a try. If it doesn't work with watercolor, you can always sponge color on to, you know, emboss it and then sponge color on, and it will resist that too. Just give you a different look. And Chris Miner asked how, sh how sh you can get the Love, Love You So Hostess set. What do you need to do that? And interestingly enough that you asked that, Chris, I planned, um, there is a couple of ways you can do that. So one of them is, I'm going to get on, I'm going to come up on screen again, and, and we'll show you what I'm talking about here. So Chris, there's a couple of ways you can do that. This is the hostess set that she's talking about. I think it's absolutely adorable. Cute as can be. This is something that can be ordered if a person places a $150 order. And then you get the twenty or the fifteen dollars in hostess benefits, and with that fifteen dollars, you could you could use some of that to buy any hostess set that you want. It doesn't you don't have to have a party, so it it can be a, a regular customer order. And I've had several clients do that. The other thing that we're gonna I'm gonna do tonight is um, actually if you participated last week in the uh, celebration thing we had going on, I sent out the packages today. Three of the people got this stamp set in their package as a surprise bonus. 
So that's kind of exciting. They, uh, I'd tell you who it was, but I don't have the list in front of me. So they're going to get that, that bonus pack. I, tonight, am going to um, do a drawing with people that if, they, if you place an order, I'll put everybody's name in a hat and we'll draw and somebody will get this stamp set for free. So that's kind of exciting. A little, little bonus, plus the other bonuses that I do. And I did want to go back to this card just for a second because I meant to, to uh, give this one away to somebody. So tell me what two colors I use to watercolor that with, and this card will be yours. I'll be watching. I'll be going around and seeing who gets first on that one. Hope that answers your questions. I think those are the only two questions that I saw. That doesn't mean that there aren't more questions. There may be. I just haven't actually found them yet. Or maybe you guys were typing while I was talking. Oh, you're welcome, Mary. I love this technique. Oh, I know. It, you know, it's really the technique with the rose set where you're just paper piercing, piecing. I keep saying piercing, and it's piecing. It's really fun, and it's really calming. And you can just cut, like, a whole bunch and just hang out. Uh, what color did, you, did I use for the frame? For the frame on the rose, I used tip top. No, I used uh, early espresso for the frame. And oh, the frame of the for the label, I used one of the yellows. I probably used uh, oh, I can look at it <laughs> sitting right here. I it looks like I used the Hello Honey. Any colors would work. Any more questions? Okay. Judy, Judy Lawson, you are the winner of the card. Island Indigo and Bermuda Bay. That was the the winning the winning color. So if you will please send me Julie, you'll need to send me a message on Facebook with your address, or you can um, send me an email at diane at ddstamps.com. Either way, and I will get this card out. I'll uh, put it out in the mail tomorrow, because I know if I don't, I'll forget. So send me your mess send me your email or your snail mail, and I will get that out in the mail to you. Congratulations. Okay, so Cheryl asked, what did you use on the corners of the blushing pink card? Ah, I will go get it and show you. I used the three, the three punch. This is probably one of those products in the Stampin' Up! catalog that gets buried and people don't realize it's there. Um, so let me pull up the screen and I'll show you what I used. So this is the punch. This is one of the new punches that came out in the holiday catalog, I believe, and it um, it's fabulous, actually. I just started using it, but you can see this is the punch that I used. So you just slide your paper. I'll use this paper here. So you're just going to slide your paper into that corner, There's there's, and then punch, and you get that look. Or if you're doing it on this side, you slide this in an, on the angle and punch. You get that scallop. Kind of cute. Hope it looks better on the table. And then the fourth one is, you slide it in there. Oh, this one doesn't go in any, this one goes in straight. Sorry, I didn't, I hadn't used this one. Obviously, that looked obvious. And then you punch and you get a little slot, which is a little slot is fun to put ribbon through to tie it. So that is just one of the new punches in, it's in the mini catalog, but it was also in the holiday catalog. So I hope that answers that question. Cool, let's see where we are now. What more have I got to share? Just a few more things and then we are done. So if you have more questions, now would be the time to ask. This is this month's tutorial, it's four techniques. I actually use the You've Got the Stamp Set with those the techniques to know um, to show you different things to do with it, but it could be any stamp set that you have. If you are a member of my virtual club, thank you, and welcome to the club. It's a great way to get um, Stampin' Up! supplies 
each month, plus my tutorials each month. Virtual club orders are $25 a month for six months, and then you get a bonus at the end of $25 in free product. Plus, you've earned all the tutorials that I've had over that six months. If you're not in my club, you go ahead and place an order of $40 or more, and you will get that tutorial free. But if you're interested, join the club, because it's a great way to get some free stuff. Another way that is great is Paper Pumpkin. You can buy prepaid subscriptions, so if you want to buy one for yourself or a gift for somebody else. this During celebration, if you order a, th a three-month prepaid subscription, you're going to get a sale on it for $55, which is a savings of $485, and there's no shipping on that. So it's just $55, and you get a free celebration item. So that's always a, a fun bonus, and it's a great little gift to give somebody. Um, this week's weekly deals, these are them. And again, like with all of my online video or workshops, if you do, do decide to place an order this week, I would recommend you do it before the end of Saturday. Use this hostess code, and you will be able to get a nice little product goodie bag from me. The product goodie bags that went out today were fun. We used the... Um, we used the stamp set, or not the stamp set. I used most of the Valentine stuff, and I used um, that little Valentine kit. I'll show you here. It's coming up here. There we go. So I used this little Valentine kit. This one here comes with all these little goodies. It's got foil. It's got ribbons. It's got ribbons. It's got sequins. It's got little bows. That's the goodie bags that went out this week, or this today from last week. And this actually is going to be our door prize tonight. So whoever wins the door prize is going to get one of these because I ordered one too many. So, so I'll send that out to the mail to whoever wins the door prize. So if you are on my website, there's a link down there to click on to, to get on to my website and um, fill out the door prize slip. If you are on Facebook, there is a... There is a button, I believe it's, I don't know, maybe orange. Down below it says door price drawing. Click on that, fill out the door price drawing. It populates and then into a spreadsheet where I where I picked a number to be the winner. If you are on YouTube, I think there's a link down in the description that you can actually click on and it will take you to the door price slip too. So lots of different ways. Everybody should be able to get in. Um, So I'm just going to make another quick run around while you guys are filling out the door price slip. And something else I was going to show. Oh, I know. I have to pull up the, the screen, though. OK. So while that's while you guys are filling out that door price slip, I'm going to quickly show you how to do the um, how to do the hostess code. Sometimes it's it's not it's hard to know. <laughs> so so we're going to be on the Stampin' Up website. This is into the store of the Stampin' Up store, and you are just going to go in and make a purchase. And I will do that here. I'll pretend like I'm buying something. I will buy this. I will add it to my bag. And then if I want to continue shopping, I just hit continue shopping and I can continue to add stuff to my bag. Once I'm done shopping, I want to go to view shopping bag. And this is where you'll apply the hostess code is right in here and hit apply. And then it will um, automatically, I will get information that you have, a, that you've applied that code on there that you placed an order. And that's how I know who gets a, who gets a freebie product and who gets to get in the door price drawing. My only thing is, is if your order is over $150, don't apply the code because you want to get those hostess benefits for yourself. And um, if, don't apply the code and I will make sure you get the goodie bag. If you forget to apply the code, I actually send out extra items in your goodie bag just so you know. If you're earning free products from Celebration, it'll all walk you through right here how to how to um, get those. And if you have issues, please do not hesitate to contact me because I would love to, I just want to make sure that you have a good experience. 
the other thing is, is if you don't want to shop online and you just want to go through me, you can either email me or call me and we will work something out and get your order placed. So just let me know. The other one, there's one more thing I wanted to show you and that is I'm going to sign into my account and I'm just going to show you quickly. I don't know what I just asked it to do, but oh well. I'm going to go up to my account. I'm going to click on that and I want you to check this on your account. Click my demonstrator. You want to make sure my name is here. But the other thing I want you to look at is right here. If you have checked no on this question, allow my demonstrator to contact me, it's considered a no contact order and I can't get your name. Now I have learned a few ways to figure out how to find your name, but I need to get your name so that I can get your address, so that I can send you a proper thank you card, I can send you a goodie packet. So you may want to check that. Make sure it's checked yes and then hit save. Save changes. That's just one of those little tips that I need people to know because I do have some people that place orders um, on my website and when it comes up to me, I have no idea who it is and I feel terrible that I can't send a, a, a nice thank you card and a gift packet. Okay, so everybody should have been filling out their door price slips and I am going to... That's what it looks like. Fill that baby out and we will do the drawing. And then I will check for questions and we're almost done. I try to keep these at an hour, but I see today we went over a little bit. But that's all right. We had a lot of information to, to show. So let's see. Oh, Becky, I'm glad you made it for your first live chat. Barb, I'm glad you're here, even if you're supposed to be working. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, oh, there's lots of questions on. There's lots of questions on Facebook here. Okay. Answer that. I love that technique with the rose too, Mary. Chris, free is always good, isn't it? We love free stuff. And can you use other dyes or embossing plates on it? Other dyes and embossing plates on. Uh, Lee, I think you're going to have to let me know. Terry, I will send you a couple of catalogs. Do you want the main, the big catalog, or the occasions mini and the celebration mini? Just let me know. I had originally asked, does Big Shot ever go on sale? I already have a less expensive similar product, and can you use the other embossing plates and dyes? Things on the Big Shot, please. Oh, okay. Um, once in a while, the Big Shot does go on sale. It hasn't for a while. Um, through Stampin' Up. Lisa and Julie love paper pumpkins. So do I. I love paper pumpkin because it's a project that I can do that I didn't have to plan. It just shows up and I can just play with it. Uh, if a Canadian wants to order through me, they can't. I can only sell to those people in the United States. And so, Susan, you're going to have to find somebody out there in Canada. There are plenty of demonstrators out there. There's probably one close to you in your area that would love to have you as a customer. But I welcome you to always attend these events and, and learn some new things from me. But I can't sell across the border, so I have to stay into uh, only sales in the United States. Mary, you are welcome. Thanks for coming tonight. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something new. Anybody else have any questions? Oh, I forgot to check the website. The website's the hardest one for me to check because i got to go through my email. Bonnie, it says use the punch many times on the inside of my card to decorate it a little more, a little bit more. Yeah, it's always fun. It's always fun to just add some little bits of stuff in the inside your cards. Thank you, Pam. She loves my work. And I'm glad that you try not to miss any of them. If you do miss them, just remember, you can always see it online on um, YouTube. Sharon, thank you. I love, I love that you love my workshops. Okay, so I am going to, how I do this, let's see here, I gotta pull up my screen. How I do this is, everybody that fills out a door price slip goes into a spreadsheet, it populates it all, I, I don't know anything about it, I just pull up the spreadsheet, which I'm gonna do right now. Hopefully I have it. <laughs> Isn't that typical to say, hmm, did I pull it up? Yes, there it is. And I just pick a number out of, 
I just write down a random number before we start. Tonight I picked number 26. And number 26, the winner is Faye Hill. Yay, Faye! So, Faye, I, I do believe that I do have your, I think I have your address. I'm sure I do. And I will be popping this in the mail to you tomorrow. It's a, actually, I think this kit's like worth 12 bucks. So that's a, that's a great little packet to have. There's lots of fun little stuff in there. I can't wait to see. I hope you send me something that you made with it. I would love that. I would love to see it. If anybody has any questions, I'm going to stick around Facebook for a little while, which means I have access to my website and have access to my email and have access to YouTube. And I would love to answer them, but I'm going to check one more time. And if there are no more questions or comments, we are going to say good night. Have a great weekend. Um, I think we're going to get snow this weekend, which we desperately need. We do have snow on the ground, but our ski run could use some more. Janet, good night. Thank you. Carol Allen, you are welcome. I'm glad that you did this. I hope that uh, I hope you learned something. I hope you can take it and make something. Jewel, you're welcome. Faye, you won. Yay! Teresa, you are welcome. It was it is fun. I really do enjoy these workshops. I kind of wish you guys were all here stamping with me. Julie, you're welcome. So if nobody has any more questions, it looks like I'm going to say good night. Thanks. Have a great night. Bye.